Hey everybody, it's Monster Art School. Yes, that is a new logo, and I'm going to finish it up sometime soon um, so that we have it on our page for the Monster Art School page. So anyway, today is Sea Serpent slash Water Dragon Day. Water Dragon? I kind of think a Water Dragon is kind of a sea serpent, although... Luna seems to think that dragons underwater would have wings, and I just think that's just I, illogical. No, I, think, I think it would help propel them, so, but that's just my opinion. Yeah, I, I think that doesn't work, but, you know, hey. So what we're going to do for this, what I'm going to try and do with this one, is we're going to try and change a little bit of what we do, what we've done in the past, a little, to make it more exciting for us to draw. So what we're going to do, are you going to draw the basic shape with us um yeah okay and then you'll just add wings yourself so you're gonna add wings or whatever to this so the basic shape we're gonna do the first thing we're gonna do is i'm gonna draw a line kind of at an angle like this okay and this is gonna be the water line so we can put little peaks and valleys on there for waves okay just a basic kind of wave thing and then I'm going to draw from out of that water. We kind of want this thing. I kind of feel like this thing is kind of snaky. So it should come up. Whoops. And we're going to do an S curve like that. Okay. So I'll make an S curve. So this is kind of a water dragon, sea serpent kind of a creature. Yeah, an S curve. I notice I'm doing a couple different ones because I want to get a couple of S curves in there. A reverse S, I guess. So that I have, I'm just throwing everything on the floor. <laughs> no, my drawing. Right. Like, no, my drawing. Awesome. I can do whatever I want. Yeah. Uh huh. Sure. I'm gonna take a look later anyway. What do you? What's the museum gonna say when your drawings are all over the floor and they're dirty and they're gonna be like, well, we can't use these now. Hmm? Don't care. I'm not going to give them to those. You're not gonna give them to the museum? Hello, Penelope. Hello, Kimberly. So what I'm gonna do is, you see how I'm drawing these lines around it? That's so that I can keep track of. It being a tube, a tubular creature. Mine is going to be underwater. Okay. I'm, mine is going to be out of the water. So we can throw some more splashes if we want down here. Basically, it's just triangles and curves. So triangle, curve, triangle, curve, like that. Now, the next step will be, we got to give this thing some arms, right? Or armish yeah. things, right? Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to do arms. So we're going to put... So right about here, I'm going to decide that... Are you alive down there? I'm going to decide that yes. this yes. part right here, right before this curve, is going to be where his arms are going to come out. I, or her arms are going to come out. First, well, we'll get there. I just want to have that there. And I want to make sure that I have this wider down here for the, the big body part of the creature. Now, now we'll get on to the head. So the head, I'm going to have it start here. I'm going to draw a long shape like this. And it's going to be kind of an ellipse, but with like almost a tubular shape where we can draw tubes around it like that. Okay? And what I want to do, the kind of thing that I'm trying to get is I want this to kind of look like part dragon, part fish. Because I figure fish are really good at moving through the water, right? Mm -hmm. So they got to know something about their shape. So I'm going to say that these that the water dragon is going to have some some fishiness to it, right? And so I'm going to draw this kind of tubular thing that's going to kind of have a fish head. And there's some ancient dinosaur fish that kind of have this look to them. And I'm going to I'm going to keep oh, that wow. look. What? Um Penelope Bauer, so can we do the Hungarian horn horn Tail? Yeah, you asked me that yesterday, and someone else asked for that, but that's, again, a, a Harry Potter thing, and I don't know if I can do something that is owned by someone else. So, copyright. yeah, it's it's a copyright issue, and if I do it on here, then I could get in trouble. I don't know if that would happen. I'm not sure, but I don't want to get in trouble for it. So uh, I, I don't want to do something that's like Harry Potter or something that's owned by something else. Yeah, but Lord of the Rings has been around long enough, and there have been a lot of different versions of it, whereas Harry Potter is recent and fairly... The people who do it are, are very litigious. They like to sue people, so... Oh, 
There's a lot more Jeff, freedom to Lord of the Rings Jeff, than there is. What? Jeff Nelson said one of the best things going on on F this is this is one of the best things going on. I said I'm out of you. Oh. I'm just saying, uh Alright. Um Okay. One of the best things going on Facebook. Oh Thanks. great. Cool, thank you. So I'm gonna Thanks, Jeff. I'm gonna put oh, Penelope just said Aww. a circle here and another circle there. Yeah, well, I mean unfortunately Penelope J.K. Rowling owns it, and Scholastic, the book company that published it, owns the, owns the rights to publish it. So if I do that, I'm I'm breaking. I'm actually technically breaking the law if I pr produce it. So yeah. it all has to do with whether or not you're allowed to do that or not. So I'm going to make a bigger circle and a half circle over here, and basically this is for the ridge over the eye, and I'm going to draw a smaller circle in there for the eye. And then right about here, we're going to draw kind of flat like that. And we're going to draw an angle like so. Um, a circle, an ellipse at an angle like that. And I think we're going to go up and down hands. and up and down. And we want this line to match this line, just like you want this to match this. Okay? Then we're going to come down. And we're going to go bring this to a point-ish thing, like so. Not a full point, like that. But we can end the point early. All dragons have noses. All dragons have noses. Okay. Maybe. And now we're going to... Now we're going to draw back from here to about right under the eye. Like right about here. Okay? So we're going to draw... We're going to draw forward, up, and then down to there, like that. They need gills. They need gills, you're right, because they need to be able to breathe underwater. Um, and then from down here, well, we're going we're gonna to make a line that goes like this so we can pinpoint where the bottom jaw is going to be. So I'm going to put the bottom jaw right about here. And I'm going to bring it around and up to that point there. And I'm going to put a line right there. And that line is going to be the jaw. That's true. You can find pearls in the sea. So if you want to put pearls on your on your dragon, you totally can. My dragon has a queen, so she's going to have that. So basically, this is like a. We're drawing like around here and down, and then bringing it up to meet with the lower jaw. And we can put a. If we want to put an eye in there, we can put an eye there. Penelope, now, this is looking kind of like it's smiling at us, and Penelope that's a little Bell, weird. Dad, yes. Said, okay, I wouldn't want you to get in trouble. Yeah, no, okay, thank you, Penelope. So now I'm going to draw that there, and that's that muscle we were talking about yesterday that snakes have and some fish have that connects the, uh, the jaw to the top of the head. We can't really see it on all animals, but snakes and snakes seem to have that. I figured that a sea serpent, a sea dragon, is going to kind of have a snaky kind of thing going on. And then right here, I'm going to bring... He really does look like he's smiling, so I think I'm going to bring this down like this. So it looks less smiley. Because I think it doesn't have to look like it's smiling. And I think this eye, what we're going to do is we're going to put the pupil in, and then we're going to draw under the pupil for the lower eyelid and we'll draw over the pupil for the upper eyelid. Something like that. Maybe we'll even get rid of that pupil. I don't even know if we need it. So we'll just draw that. And then it'll look kind of like you've got this crazy dragon eye. And maybe it'll have, instead of a pupil, it'll have a, an alligator type eye like that. And over here we can draw this shape of the upper eyelid and the lower eyelid there. So you can see both sides. And now, from here I'm going to go and draw back here to draw a fin. And another fin back here. Or not fin, sorry, a, a crest, I guess. Back there. I made this guy bigger than I expected to. My sketch was much smaller, so now I'm kind of running out of space. So we'll figure this out. Here I'm going to draw some triangles going up. Is going 
going to be uh, part cat. Part cat? Like a sea fish cat? Okay. A, or a catfish dragon? My dragon's name is going to be... Is going to be... Uh, is so, going to be sea pearl. Sea pearl? Nice. So now back here, I'm going to draw... Sorry, sea foam. An extra line like the jaw. I'm going to do three more of those here. And the reason is these are going to be the gills. So what we can do with the gills is we can... Gills have these finer areas like so. So I just cut ridges into them like that to make them look like gills. Zombie, I hope you're still not sad. Sad for what? Not to be able to do um, The ridge back? I hope not. I think it's not that big a deal. I hope it's not that big a deal. So now from up here, we'll go down. We can draw some fins coming down. Or some stripes on the fin. You can I show those spines that exist inside dragon fins? I mean inside water, uh, fish fins. And then... Yeah, I kind of like I said, I kind of made this dragon bigger than I expected. So now we're gonna have to see what we're gonna do here about the arms and stuff, because I'm I'm running out of room. Sometimes you just don't know what you're gonna draw, and it ends up getting bigger than you think. So I'm gonna draw these triangles back here. I think I'm gonna lower the area where the arms are to down to here. Dad, these are my gills. Yeah. Let's see. Just because I think up here would be too close to the head. And I want to keep that nice arc of the neck like that. So as we get down here, we're going we're gonna to draw that center line that comes down here. All the way down his belly. And we'll get these finished up up here. So the more we do uh, Dad, these kinds of things, yeah? It's actually what? called a uh, Hungarian horn tail, not a ridgeback. Okay. I don't know. Who said that? Penelope. Oh, did I say the wrong thing? <laughs> Someone else mentioned Harry Potter stuff yesterday, too, and I'm like, I just can't do the Harry Potter stuff without getting, potentially getting in trouble. They'll just send, they'll, they'll, you know, they can sue you for a lot of money. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I don't really want to do that, go with that. Time. Well, the company, which doesn't need to worry about rent, I don't think, Money. would, you know, they would take all, you know, they could very much hurt you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, so well, anyway, I'll, I'll so I'm going to have these well, yeah. scales that overlap each other, and it's basically a pattern of triangles, or diamond shapes, actually, is a better way to put it. But I've noticed I make them skinnier as they get further away from us and go around the body of the dragon. And they get wider and more open as they get closer to us. And as they go around this way, they're going to get skinnier and smaller again over this way. My, the dragon's limbs are not going to be as big as uh, the, the sky dragon's limbs. Okay. So now down here, I think this dragon is getting pretty massive. So I'm going to lower this down here. Wait, no, all queens have massive wings. And this is going to be his arm. And I'm going to basically draw a ball right there and then a half a ball over there. And from here, I'm going to bring a tube down into the water. OK. Now that looks weird, like, oh, we just ended up, why do we draw the arm at all if we're just going to end up that, having that tube go into the water? Well, that's because all the queens, uh, we're going to have the hand come out here. So we'll draw a tube coming into the water over here. So you have the tube coming out like this. And then we're going to end the tube with like a rounded end. And then around that we draw kind of a curved ball or a flattish ball like that, like a paddle. Imagine you're drawing a paddle like that. And then from this point here in the middle, we're going to draw out one, two, three, 
four, five. Okay, so what those are gonna be is, those are gonna be where we put the knuckles for the hand. And they should be able to see in the dark because of the midnight zone. Because of the midnight zone? Yeah, in the sea. Oh, okay. So now, then we can take these up and make fingers. So one knuckle. I'm only going to do one knuckle on these fingers because, I don't know, I figure that you'll see why in a second. So I have one knuckle and then the end, and then one knuckle, and then the end, one knuckle. And then on this side, we'll go and do this same thing over here. We'll do one knuckle and then the end of the hand. We're just making triangles at the end. And then what we'll do is we'll connect these knuckles like this. Okay, so now what you're going to end up with is a webbed hand, a webbed claw. A webbed talon. Well, it's a webbed claw. A webbed, I don't know, no. whatever. Well, a talon is just the, a talon is just the piece out here on a, on a bird's foot. So, and now some back dragon, here. Thing, some dragons, some dragon sea serpents have wings. So Olivia is sort of right. Um, some dragon, dragon what have wings? Some dragon sea serpents have wings. Sort of right. Well, she can do wings if she wants. I'm not against it. Yeah, I, I'm not saying she's wrong. I'm just saying that, she's, you know, that I'm, that she's doing something different. That's all. Yeah, everything the buddies can do something Yeah, you can different. always do something different. Now, so that's where creativity comes from. You take what you see and you go, oh, well, I'm going to try something like that, but I'm going to go do something different too. So now around this hand that's coming out, what we're going to do is we're going to throw more of these water lines... But what you want to do is imagine that the water is rippling out from the hand. So as it comes out of the water, you'll have these kind of curves that go basically mimic the edge of the hand there out like this. And you'll get like some more lines out like this. I like to do the wings. I like to do the, uh, the face, the neck, then the wings. Yeah. So now we've got Look at that the shoulder. wing. That's really nice. I like that, Luna. I like how you're using your shapes to create your dragon. That's very cool. That's exactly what I want you to think about is the shapes that you're starting. You don't have to draw exactly what I'm drawing here, but if you think about shapes and about basic shapes, you can draw anything that way. You just have to be able to look at stuff in the real world and think of what the basic shapes that make it up are. Like, you know... Like we talk about eyes, and there's like an, you know, an eye is a ball inside a socket, and if you draw the ball and then you put the eyelids over top of it, it makes a lot more sense, right? Dad, are you going to do the bottom of the of the of the, of the serpent? Yeah. Okay. Well, it's going to be hitting the water here. So what I'm going to do is what? it's going into the water here. I thought it was coming out. Well. It is coming out of the water, but the body is going down into the water. <laughs> because we can't see it all, because, because it's underwater, right? So if you want, you could do something like this. And what, that'll, what you do is you kind of draw around these shapes. And you can make this silhouette in the water of where the creature's going into the water. And if you break it up with the lines, with the water lines, it'll start to look like it's underwater like that. So now I'm gonna put the other arm over here, but we're probably not gonna see much of that other arm, although we could bring the arm out of the water over here. In fact, let's do that We'll put the circle there like we did with this one and then we'll we have to have a thumb and then the three four one two three four pads and we'll come out to the fingers out here what's so funny and we'll draw the thumb out like this again these are all just pointy no, spikes and draw the, so if you look at the hand, right, 
we're drawing this part here, that's this. This part here, which is this. The thumb, which is here. You've got the four pads, one, two, three, four, and then the fingers, which are these, okay? Dad, I think the tails are gonna be super, 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 super powerful because... Yeah, I think you're right. I think a dragon, a water dragon, the tail is really gonna be where they're kicking the water out. No, I mean... So... Because they can, because what I'm... Yeah, they need to be very... They I'm going to... Yeah. Super powerful. I imagine they would be. I'm going to connect the skin between the fingers. And now, since he's going into the water here, or coming out of the water, depending on how your perspective is, what we're going to do is back here, I'm going to draw a couple more waves. And then back here in the back, in the distance, I'm going to draw this here. So I'm going to draw two lines like that. And then I'm going to connect those lines up here and connect it up here. And I'm going to go, so this looks really small and in the distance. I'm going to draw a really beautiful dragon tail with all kinds of spines on it, like so. So that's his tail, and it's in the it's coming out of the water way back here. So we can draw a little splash around that tail, like so. Green sea foam is a very, very, and very, very deep blue. We can draw the tail back here, like that. And now it comes down to, we've got the basic shape of this dragon done. Now it comes down to how you want oh to decorate God. it. So we can start to do more fins on here. Oh, and here. I may have messed up a little bit on the underbelly. Uh-oh. So now one thing to think about is, if something's in the foreground of the picture, make the lines thicker. Okay? So if we've got something like this dragon is in the middle of the picture here, right? But his hand is in front of him. Make the line thicker on the outside of it, and that'll make it appear like it's coming forward. So we can get rid of these, these things, but I think I'm gonna keep the ghost of them behind so I can draw, and what I mean by the ghost is when the eraser leaves little bits of drawing behind. So I'll draw the fingers as separate so you can see how they connect. But we're not gonna draw the separate fingers. Uh-oh. Oh, actually, those are really good. Just remember your basic shapes, honey. Remember the foot and the fingers, remember? You have to break all those things down into simple shapes, right? Remember what they're made out of. If you remember the, where the bones are, like one, two, three bones on the fingers, and then you have your hand, that's a whole other piece, right? You draw from there. Okay, where's where's the hip? And and should the hip be wider than this lower part of the leg or not? Like, should the upper leg be wider than the lower leg? Probably, right? Yeah, that's okay. really too wide. Oh, the, I didn't realize that was the other side of it. Yeah, that's too wide. Remember, it's going to connect up here, right? I'm trying. Okay, I'm trying to help you out, sweetie. I'm not, I'm not mad. I don't know why, but it's really hot in here. It is? Okay. Yeah, like I'm so, starting to sweat. Oh. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish this hand off with the same kind of thing. I'm going to get rid of these extra lines where the ghosts uh, are. And I'm going to keep really the pads. A, a, a schooner, a schooner, uh, a S. C-H-O-O-N-E-R for sale. A schooner? Yeah. Yeah, it's a type of a boat. So I'm going to draw fin, uh, scales coming down like this. I know. What, what, what was she saying about the schooner, though? She has a sale. She has a schooner for sale? Wow. Okay. Are you trying to sell it on this page, uh, Kimberly? So just do a zigzag pattern here for the scales. 
You don't need to be, it doesn't need to be anything super elaborate. It can be simple like that. And we'll do the same on here. We'll just, but what you do is you choose a, an air, a place to connect it all. So where they're all gonna come to that same point. So if you do that, it looks very even. And then you can bring these up and you have another line going like that so you can bring them all down as well. Like that. And then you can do little tiny scales in here. And you can bring the back scales around unless you want to continue these scales, which probably I should have continued down his body. So I wouldn't draw every single scale. What I do is I draw the scales in the darker areas. So I put the scales in where the back of the creature is going to be or where it's going to be darker. And I leave the belly area, the light area, where the light's hitting it, I leave that with less drawing of the scales. So as I go through here, I'm going to start to, I'll leave this area well, for one, I'm going to get rid of those smaller scales. I'm going to kind of do underbelly scales, which are big and flat like this. And then back here, I'll keep the, the more traditional fishy scales. And so up here, I'll have the fish scales coming around with the gills. So these are the gills here. So I'll have fish scales coming like this. And on the face, we can do little tiny fish scales. I actually think she's kind of fat. My dragon fat, dragon. Fat. fat dragon? Fat dragon? Fat dragon? I don't know. She's supposed to be slim and she's supposed to be fit. Um, well, on a fit dragon, I imagine the shoulders and the hips are wider than the belly. And now we can do... That's all wrong. We cut that into a half moon on the nose. And we'll solidify these drawing these lines up where you want to keep the lines, just make them darker and more solid. So these will be like little kind of fin horn things coming off the side of it, her head. I think it's a her. I don't know why. And we can have more fin things coming off like this too. And then in here, I think the teeth should be kind of like a fish's teeth. And fish have these thin, well, depending on the fish you're talking about, have these thin needle-like teeth. So I think it'd be fun to give them this kind of fi like deep sea fish needle teeth. So if you look at, uh, I forget the name of the fish, but it's this weird underwater, like super deep water fish. Um, I forget the name of it. Angler fish, they have almost like needle teeth. So I think giving this this uh, dragon kind of needly teeth would be fun. So you just basically make them really long, uh, long, thin uh, points. So we'll do the same here, long, thin points like that. And what I'm doing down here is I'm just showing this. I made an extra line, and I'm drawing them coming out of that extra line. That extra line is going to be the gum that the teeth are attached into. I need like a frill on the on their spine. Oh, cool. Oh, nice. I like that. And then back here we can put these ones in. These back ones, what's nice about those, you just have to draw the outline because oh. we're going to fill this in black. Oh, but we had to go. Of course she had to go. She has to go to class. And then we'll bring... We'll fill those teeth in the back in black. See? And now by filling them in black, they become a silhouette of the teeth and they look even more ferocious. So in here, I'm going to make that a little darker because it's always dark in the inside of the eye socket. We'll make the inside of the nose dark. We'll draw this. And here, because this is muscle, we're going to draw this like, we're going to put like a pattern, a texture there. And then we'll bring a line like this to make sure it looks like a nice strong muscular jaw. And I have a feeling this dragon, I don't know, I think this dragon's like a special dragon. So I think this dragon right here, 
on its head. Right here, it's got a special jewel that it wears. And it's got like a jewelry thing that comes around like this. And I'm basically gonna make like kind of weird loopy uh, frilly kind of shapes to create a... She has pearls on her horns. A kind of a... Um, yours has pearl on her horns, that's cool. She's got horns too. Yeah. And so I'm gonna put, well this is inspired by you, Luna. I made I made her have a jewel on her forehead. Right there. And we'll throw a few oh, more a small scales. Idea? Yeah, I guess. I just kind of thought it would be neat and then you did it and I was like, oh that's a cool idea. So now we can throw decoration, finish up these little things like the, the lines on the fins, so we know that they're the fins. And then we have to think about this back fin back there, right? Because it's supposed to be far back. So what we're going to do to make it look like it's far back is we're going to make this line nice and thick. And we'll do the same here. So we'll make these lines nicer and thicker. And then back here, we're not going to draw the scales because from a distance, we wouldn't see the scales except a little bit. So we'll just draw like a few scales like that. And by not drawing every scale, we kind of make it feel like it's further away. Are you trying to say what I'm saying before no. I say it? I think you are. No, I'm not. So these ones are going to look a little bit like they're further away. You're doing it, aren't you? No. I think you were. And then these here, we can draw more fins out like so. Okay. Nice fart noise, kid. Hey. And then, so here we're gonna draw these around like this. You call me butthead face? I'm not butthead face. Okay, you better not call me butthead face. Call the dog that. Poor dog. <laughs> no, I don't. Yes, you do. You call her butthead face all the time. Oh, sorry. Butthead face dog is what you call her. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sure she likes it, but she doesn't mind. She doesn't know. She doesn't know what butthead face dog means. Hey, you don't want to know what she just whispered in my ear. Don't call me butt dad. Don't call me butt dad. That's not my name. So now, this arm over here. In order to make that arm look like it's behind, we're gonna put the arm in shadow, and we're gonna draw the splash effect from the body here. Jamie Newbold said awesome dragon. And then we're gonna do the same here. We're gonna draw up like that. Oh and I put a little fin here, so we should probably put a fin on this one. Oh I did. Right there. We'll draw the fin the fin ridges like that. And then and up here I think what's gonna be fun is now we can do some fun like decorative stuff because we've got most of this done so I think like you know we can throw some more decorations on here we can throw some ridges on his eye on her eyelid here we can make these have ridges on them like that I need lunch oh wow okay what time is it by the way and we can okay we could do that. Um, now, some of the things that I would like to do with this is I would like to erase some of the extra lines because I made kind of a mess with this one. So I'm going to go in, I'm going to darken some of these lines in. And that's one of the reasons why I draw really lightly so that I can get rid of the light lines pretty easily after I've drawn my piece in and the dark lines will stay. So also I'm erasing around the darker lines so I don't lose them. And if I have to, I just go back in and redraw those lighter lines, those, the darker lines, if I feel like I missed something important. But I've got my water here. I've got my splashies back here. Some splashies here. And then you can draw some more water areas here. 
So the idea is that this dragon goes all the way down under the water here. So actually, since this is supposed to be his arm, or her arm continuing, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this a little darker. So what you're gonna see is this is gonna be kind of a trick where in between these lines that I'm drawing for the waves, I'm gonna draw the shadow, or not the shadow, but like the ghost form of the arm of the dragon. And I'm gonna bring it down like this. And you'll see, once I finish it, you'll, it'll make sense. What it's gonna be is, is like, I'm recreating the sense of this arm, but since I'm breaking it up with these white lines, it implies that it's going underwater. And then over here, I'll bring it back down and then back up. And we'll bring this down to dark. And we'll bring it back up into the light up here. And the idea is that these here, these white lines are reflections on the surface of the water that show us that the water is kind of moving around. And then when it comes to this part here, we'll just make this dark, but we won't make it as dark as the arm. And so what'll happen is it'll make the arm look like it's coming closer to us than the rest of the body. See that effect? It's kind of like a little magic trick. I like doing little magic tricks with, with art. It's fun. And we can do the same over here with this arm. So what we'll do is down here in the water, we'll just kind of draw a little bit of shade where the arm is. And we'll come down like this. And as long as we keep this pretty even and consistent, and we keep the, the, the tone that we're creating or the value that we're creating with our pencil consistent, it will look like the creatures coming in and out of the, out of the, out of the darkness. And we can bring these lines back around like so. All right, so how's that looking? How's everyone doing with their drawings? I hope you're all doing great. Um, I'm gonna move some of these water lines around out here and kind of draw them a little bit more solidly. So it really looks like these are ripples in the water I can do a couple more if I want with an eraser. You just go in and kind of erase them out. And it kind of gives you that kind of effect that it's coming out of the water. And then back here, if we want to do the same with the tail. Now, because this is closest to us, it's darkest. This is further away, so it's less dark. This back here is going to be lighter. So because it's lighter, I mean, because it's back further away from us, it's going to be lighter. And so when you're dealing with the dark and light of the drawing, don't make this too dark back here because it's further away. So the values or the, the black and white of it are going to be less intense. So what I'm trying to get is that impression, like this tail goes way down into the water, somewhere way down here, and way below the dragon down here, it goes, it comes back up over there. See, that's a little magic trick that you can play. If you do this for your art teacher, man, you're going to blow their minds. They're going to be like, how did you figure that out? And you say, because I'm a genius, that's why. Don't ever tell them that you got it from Monster Art School, because then they're going to know the secret. So um, in here, so we can do things like if we want to create more value or more, more shading, a little bit more shading, we don't have to go in and do like too much rendering we can do is we can do little shadows under things like under the armpit, under the throat here, okay, where things kind of squish together. It's a good spot to kind of draw darks. Where 
the back moves away from us here. We can let this go into dark. And that way the dragon's back, I'll, I'll make it feel like it's fitting the scales better. But other than that, that way the dragon's back seems to go into the darkness. And then we can draw, if we want to continue this darkness, we should probably continue some dark going up like this around the back of the neck there. And we can do the same on the arm, like right about here. Just draw like a dark line. And that'll separate the light from the dark. And, you know, and then you can do things like in here if you want. You can do another dark line in here as well to do the same thing. And if we knocked this arm back by making it in shadow, we can also do the same to this arm. But what's fun about this is that we can leave the webbing between the fingers transparent. So leave that clear. And now that whole arm should go back into the distance and this arm will be up in the foreground. See how that works? So if you wish to do that to the tail back here, you can do that too. And then what I would do with the tail just tone it back a little bit like that. And see, I'm using the side of my pencil to tone it. it makes it happen faster. You can tone it all back like this. And just fill it in. But don't fill it in so dark that you lose the details. And now you should have what should look like a pretty decent dragon. You guys doing okay with this? Does anyone have any questions about what I'm doing? So sometimes I do stuff like I'll, I'll talk about things in this class and doing these, these monster art school classes. I'll talk about things like value and I'll talk about stuff like dark and light and things like that. And it's really stuff that when you get older and you start working in art school, or I shouldn't say older because some of you guys aren't, aren't little kids, but you start getting into things like value. And value is basically uh, the scale between light, white and black and all the grays that go in between. So when I talk about values, what I'm talking about is that this color, this dark value here is a value, is a shade darker than this value here. So if you see how this is darker than that, you can now see, you know, this is white, gray, and then dark gray. And those are three different values. And this is a lighter version of this. So you have one, two, three, four values. And then I've got the black, the really dark lines that I'm doing these deep shadows in. So then you have one, two, three, four, five values. So value is just a range of, of black and white. So in the mouth, I can make the value in here darker to make it look like it's really dark. But also, when I do things like making a darker value in an area, it tends to catch the attention of the viewer. So if I make this area here really dark, what's going to happen is when you're looking at the drawing, that part of the drawing is going to be the part of the drawing that you see first. So this is going to take the eye away from everything else. It's probably going to go, this is the first thing you're going to see, this is the third thing you're going to see, and that back there is going to be the last thing you see. Does that make sense? Thanks, Nigel. I appreciate that. So what, what we're doing here, what I'm trying to do is kind of give you a, a basic you know, art lesson here. Um, so values is a really nice little uh, nice thing to know. And we can, and by using the values, you can control where a person looks at the picture. Um, so, like, you know, things like this, like if you want to darken this area in here or darken this area in Daddy here. Do. Hi, Lottie Do. But notice the value of this gray is different than the value of this gray. And I did that because I want 
this to look like it's on the surface and this to look like the inside deep dark area inside the mouth. And so I do little things like that uh, to make things look more interesting. Oh my gosh, that's a lot of jelly you've spilled all over the place. You better eat that jelly off that plate. I will. Okay. Um, so now a little trick that you can do to really make your drawing kind of look really neat is right around the eye here. If you want everyone to look at the eye, just go in what? and shade this area around the eye. And now everyone's going to see that eye because <laughs> basically it's like creating a bullseye for the eye. So this area here becomes really noticeable against this dark. Does that make sense? So that was the art school portion of the monster art school. So we'll talk more about values as we go further because I think values are really, people don't know enough about them and they're really something that you can use in your drawing to really make your drawing look really good. Um, so anyway, I think that's the end of monster art school for today. And I hope you had a good time uh, drawing along with me. I hope you drew along with me. And if you didn't, I hope you enjoyed watching. So uh, have, a good, have a great day. Later on today at 3... Oh, oh, wait. You want to do announcements? Come on over here and do the announcements so they can hear you. Because if you're that far if away, they can hear you. If you're watching this from YouTube, um, don't forget to comment any questions that you have. We'll, we'll, we check our YouTube constantly each week. Yep. We'll try. Because we have to and upload new videos. Uh, one sec. I don't know what you're asking about. Okay. My son has a design. question. And I wanted to show you Luna's. This is Luna's drawing. So you can see what she's doing. And then the last thing you always do before you finish your drawing is you always sign it. So I'm going to put my name right here. And you should sign it with your name, not mine. Because, you know, then it will be my drawing and I'll own it. Ha ha ha. Unless your name's so, Steve. There you go. Unless your name's Steve. So, Jacob, you had a question? Yeah, it's because I wanted to spend some time with you. Oh, okay. So um, I'm done here for today. I don't know if I'm going to be doing a, a an advanced monster art school because uh, because... Time is tight today, but I think I'm definitely going to do it tomorrow. Um, so we'll do a more Monster Art School Advanced, maybe even later on tonight. I have some things I need to draw that I might just come online and I'll announce that I'm doing it and I'll let everybody know uh, through that. But I, I don't think I can do the next class because my son wants to play a ball with me. So I'm going to go play ball with my son. Um, so anyway, I will see you guys all later. Have a great day and uh, have fun drawing, okay?